Hi everyone, I welcome you all to this video of AWS Application Load Balancer and this is going to be a super useful video about a very useful service that is AWS Application Load Balancer. We will talk about what a Application Load Balancer is, what it does, what are its components and then we will also see a step-by-step -step tutorial where you can con where we will configure our application load balancer based on path routing or path based routing. So guys, AWS application load balancer is a part of uh, elastic load balancer of AWS services. And if you do not know about elastic load balancing, we have another video where we have spoken about at length on elastic load balancing as well as on classic load balancer. So it's a basically a very powerful service which will help you to distribute incoming traffic to multiple targets. And those targets could be your EC2 instances, your containers, your IP addresses. This AWS application load balancer works works on layer 7 of OSI layer. So it would be an appropriate fit of your workloads or use cases where HTTP and HTTPS protocols are considered. Also, yes, it also works for gRPC as well. With its advanced routing capabilities, it can intelligently route traffic to the most available and healthy targets. And we'll talk about what targets are. And by that, it will ensure high availability and the low latency for your applications. But how it achieves all these? So to know that, let's start to know about its components. So guys, let's talk about the application load balancer component. The first component would be your application load balancer or the load balancer itself, which will serve as a single point of contact for the clients and where all the user requests will come in and the load balancer will distribute these incoming requests or the application traffic across multiple targets and those targets would be your EC2 instances or your Lambda functions or containers, etc. Then the next comes in that would be your listener. Listener is a process which would check for the incoming request based on the protocol and port which you configure. And once that they find a request based on the port and port, uh, protocols which have been configured, there will be rules defined on the listeners. Every listener will have a default rule defined and this re default rule would be kind of a rules of last resort if there's nothing matched up in the stack this route would this rule would be applicable and this rule this rule would decide to which target the application traffic gets delivered other than the default rule you can also have uh, custom rules you can also assign to your listener and based on that your load balancer based on these rules your load balancer would be able to route the traffic to the register targets into the target groups. Now the next piece of puzzle is your target group. Now this target group basically they would route the request to the individual register targets. And those register targets as we spoke earlier could be your EC2 instances, your Lambda functions, your IP addresses and these target groups would help in routing that request. Also you can configure health checks on each target group they can perform health checks on each register target and see whether the target is in a healthy state to receive the traffic or not now we all know the components of the application load balancer now let's quickly jump into the AWS management portal and see how we gonna put all these pieces together to make a workable solution now, before we go and you know start configuring our first application load balancer, let's discuss the architecture which we're gonna use in configuring it so that you can have a visual impression of what we're gonna do in the management portal. So basically, we're gonna configure three uh, EC2 instances. We will try to simulate an e-commerce website which is delivering images from one server which will have a register registration page or account opening page on a different server and the card on a different server so it's kind of a architecture which closely you know matches or imitate the microservice kind of an architecture as well so let's say your user trying to access any company.com website and they uh, we put a default rule that they, if there's nothing else in the URL they go and land on the registration page where they can get them some themselves registered and if they put an image in the if your browser sees an image in the URL path then application load balancer will do the path based routing and it will send the traffic to this images EC2 instances which are in a different availability zone once your user uh, 
picks up something and it goes into the cart the those content or the cart part of the application would be served from the cart ac instance which is also part of another is availability zone this is going to be our architecture for today's demonstration so let's jump in to the management portal guys so guys we are in management console and now i'm going to configure ec2 instances we're going to configure three ec2 instances uh, i'm going to demonstrate one and then you can uh, do the same with the uh, other two as well and then we'll create target groups and then we'll see how to put these together and create an application load balancer in a working solution so let's quickly start click on launch instances i'm going to launch an instance i'm currently logged into singapore reason but you can pick a reason based on your use case i'm going to give it a name let's say register i'm going to use amazon linux as my ami and going to use free tier eligible ami here I'm going to pick T2 micro that is again free tier eligible guys for your demonstration or the POC purpose T2 micro should be good enough. Let me select a key pair. I have a couple of key pairs already created. If you do not have one, you can create a new pair key pair from here. I'm going to quickly go through it. Also, I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to use a default VPC, but for uh, production purposes, you should be or you would be creating your customized VPCs. If you do not know how to create a VPC, we have another video where you can see at length on all the details to create VPC and every other services along with it. So I'm going to use a default VPC. I'm going to pick my subnet here. So let's say I'll start with uh, availability zone 1A. I'm going to pick that subnet. And you can see it's already automatic public IP is assigned. I have, uh, let's create a security group quickly i'm gonna call it alb02 security group let's say 323 today's date i'm gonna just copy paste this thing into the description as well i'm gonna although ssh is not needed but i'm still keeping this open in case uh, something goes wrong at least i can log in and you know uh, ssh into my instance and uh, do the troubleshooting I understand that uh, rules with source 0.0.0, .0 should not be allowed but because this is going to be a small demonstration and I'm going to delete this instance later on so this is good with me but for production purposes make sure that you are not using it until it is unless it is really needed. I'm going to add another security group rule because we're going to customize it for or because it's going to be a web server so I'm going to open HTTP port uh, and again I'm going to open it for anywhere because this is going to be a public facing server everybody is supposed to log in or oh, sorry to browse the website now everything else i'll keep uh, as it is on the defaults so that we can quickly run this instance this one thing i'm going to put a small script here so that i can make this server an apache server and i can create a path which would be used in math, my path based routing and we'll put our index html over there so let's quickly do that this is going to be a bash script i'm not updating the server as of now because uh, but in real production scenarios any new server which are using with the existing ami it's a good idea to start updating the server first so yeah i'm install httpd uh, i'm gonna start the services Check config in case it gets restarted. Then I'm going to create a directory here on which I'm going to keep my index.html. It's going to be uh, on this path. var www slash html and I'm going to call it register. So this is going to be my uh, path for the registration server. So I'm going to just copy it because I need it again. Let's quickly create a small uh, web page for this purpose. I'm going to use html only again. So html and h1 is, i mean you all know how to do that so this is the registration server if someone is uh, not aware and need this uh, script i'm going to put it in the description you can copy paste from there as well so uh, let's close it quickly and here we go let's do it and move it to index.html so this is how it is i'm gonna copy this one so that i can use it for the another servers as well i'm gonna keep the same script in the description below so i'm gonna launch the instance and let's wait till this instance comes up so i'm gonna pause the video and come back soon 
Now we see our servers are ready. These are the EC2 instances we are going to use as our targets. So let's quickly create a target group. So here is the target. If you look at the left hand side, scroll down on the same EC2 dashboard, you will see a load balancing option. And under the load balancing, you can see load balancers in the target group. So let's create a target group first. Create a target group. So if you see here, just let me zoom in a bit so you can see what kind of a target type this target group is going to contain so we can have instances we can have ip addresses we have lambda functions and application load balancer as well now for our demonstration purpose we're going to use a, a type instances because we have ec2 instances in a specific vpc in aws but you can also use ip addresses if you want to support load, uh, support load balancing between VPC instances as well as your on-prem resources. The only one thing you need to understand here that if you are going to use IP addresses as your target group uh, types and you have some on-prem resources which you want to load balance along with your VPC resources, there has to be a connectivity between your on-prem data center to AWS either through Direct Connect or through a site-to-site -site VPN. Now you can also have Lambda function as the targets and you can also have you can also have a network load balancer in front and from there you can you know uh, divert the traffic or the uh, distribute those requests to the application load balancer also. Here you will find that you can have a static IP address which you can use and also private link along with your application load balance. And we'll talk about private link in one of another videos, a very important topic which is good for ISVs and the SaaS service providers out there. So let's give a target group name. I'm going to call it, uh, uh, let's say, default target group. I'm going to keep it uh, HTTP entity because we don't have a secure listener. We do not, we are not using any certificate for this demonstration purpose. If, but if you are using HTTPS, you need to pick your protocol as HTTPS as well. Now, this is the port. Now you need to pick the VPC. Basically, this VPC will contain the instances we're going to include in a target group. So this is our default VPC, which we have. Then you can select your protocol version, whether you're going to use HTTP, HTTP 1, HTTP 2 or GRPC. Now, as I said, as I told earlier, you can configure health checks on ta on per target group, which will conduct a health check on each registered target. So here you can define that uh, health check. So you can pick your health check protocol, whether it's an HTTP or HTTPS, and then you provide the path for your health check. Let's say it should be either you can check the health on the route, or you can specifically go and you know get it to the index HTML. So this is our path for index HTML because this is I'm going to use for registration page and other than that you will have advanced health check settings where you can define healthy threshold unhealthy threshold basically these are a consecutive number of uh, success before an unhealthy instance can be declared healthy these are the number of consecutive uh, failures before your load balancer will declare any instance as uh, unhealthy and then we have timeout during which uh, if you your no response is received your health check would be considered as a failure and this is a basically interval interval between two uh, between two consecutive health checks now you can put ad additional attributes or you can uh, you know use certain default attributes so which we'll see after your load balancer gets created you can also add tags to it so i'm going to click on next <coughs> So now these are the three instances which are running. So it is asking you to register your targets to the target group. So I'm going to uh, pick the target which is named as registration server. Uh, again, I'm going to use port 80 for that. And I want to include it as a pending below so that this would stay in the pending status of health check. And once this is uh, done and configured, the health check would be uh, performed based on the parameters which we selected in the previous step create target group so my target group will get created accordingly we can create multiple target groups based on our architecture now you can see we have created three target groups one is default one is named as cart another one named as image so and currently you see there is no load balancer has been associated with any of the target group so now let's 
our instances are ready we have target groups we have which, which has already registered our targets now the next step would be to create our application load balancer so currently we don't have anything let's create a load balancer here you will see that we get get options to create application load balancer network load balancer as well as the gateway load balancer and then we have a classic load balancer which is a basically previous generation so uh, aws strongly suggest for your newer workloads to, uh, try to pick application network or gateway load balancers because this is where all the developments and advancement is happening although classic load balancer is not going go away anywhere it's still there yep so but again it's a, it's a good practice to start using the newer versions of it so let's click on pick our application load balancer which is good for http and https use cases i'm going to click on create now basically you need to provide your basic configuration like i'm going to give it name let's say alb01 then what kind of a scheme for this uh, i mean whether it's going to be an internet facing or kind of an internal load balancer this one is going to be internet facing so i'm going to stick with the internet facing your load balancers can support ip version 4 or they can also support ip version 4 along with ip version 6 that would be called a dual stack load balancer but again for this demonstration i'm going to use uh, ip version 4 then you need to pick the vpc uh, currently we have only one vpc that is going to select it and then you need to pick the availability zone where this would be mapped now there's one more thing you need to uh, remember here regarding availability zone and the subnets you basically need to specify uh, one of the uh, you know availability i mean uh, one of the subnet which can be part of a availability zone or would be part of a local zone or outpost as well now we because we are working on a vpc so we're going to pick an availability zone as shown in the screen so basically we need to at least select two avail two availability zone subnets and where we need to have each subnet from a different availability zone also there is one uh, you know recommended best practice that your low your load balances are highly scalable and they do it through this scalability by their own in the back end to ensure that they can scale properly we need to verify that each availability zone subnet which is uh, which your load balancer is going to use has a CID block with at least slash 27 of net mask and it should have at least eight free ip addresses per subnet your load balancer can use these ip addresses to establish your connections with the targets and based on the uh, traffic profile you can scale higher and consume maximum up to 100 ip addresses which are distributed across all these enabled subnets right so i'm going to pick all the uh, all the subnets here so currently we have only one so i'm going to pick all availability zone along with the subnet and here we go now the security group the security group again is uh, basically kind of in a virtual firewall if uh, uh, you are not aware what security group how does it work we have a very you know popular video on security group please go through it and you know uh, i suggest you should uh, see how does it work so for this purpose the rules of the security group which basically gets associated with the load balancer they should allow traffic in both the direction on both listener as well as on the health check ports which we configured previously and after that you i mean currently we're gonna pick the security group which we configured on the previous step i'm gonna remove the default one i'm gonna use this existing one and you can have up to five security groups which can be added here now this is going to be another i mean this is going to be our listener configuration and this is our default i mean this is listener's default rule which we're going to configure so we we're going to stay with the same http and edge uh, uh, protocol and the port number 80 because this is going to a web server and it's not a secure web server and based on this that okay if there is a incoming request coming on this protocol and at this port where it should go you can pick up your target group because i'm going to make it as a because this is my def uh, default rule so i'm going to pick default target group for this request to land now you can put listener tags as well you can add more listener but currently we are working on a single listener with multiple rules you can also add additional op optional services add-on services like global accelerator web and we'll talk about it later how you how web works along with application load balancer and before we go ahead please remember that application load balancer is in a service along with you can 
attach a web as well that is your web application firewall we'll talk about in the separate video about it so once you are done with the basic configuration you have input it you can go to creating a load balancer it will take few moments and then say successfully created load balancer we're gonna go view our load balancer and if you see currently the state is provisioning when this uh, gets uh, totally active uh, and provisioned you will see there is a change in a state and look change in a color as well you can see now the uh, application load balancer is in active state and it is serving our three availability zones so i'm going to select this one so that we can check the details about details about it so here you can see what kind of an application load balancer is what is the ip address it is uh, it's whether it's an ip version 4 supporting or it's supporting a dual stack what kind of a scheme it has what is the dns name status what vpc is attached to what are the availability zones so you can see all these things from here and if you go here you can click on listeners so this is our listener which is working on HTTP protocol on port number 80. This is the ARN, not there's no security policy as of now, and this is basically forwarding it to the default target group. Now, this is basically uh, the configuration which helps load balancer to route the request based on the rules. So currently, see, we're gonna check what is the current status of our load balancer. So I'm gonna pick this DNS name from here. I'm gonna take it to the browser. I'll just copy it here. I'll see what happens. So see, we are landing to an Apache server. So if I, I did not configure anything to the register server. So if I put register here, now the URL has, I mean the URL as a path shows register and you see the load balancer is taking it to the registration server. This is basically the default target group and the default target is there, right? Now, if I put image here, it will not or it should not go anywhere because, yeah, it's not found. Reason being, we have not configured any other rule which can help this request to take to the right target. So now let's do that. So if you go select your listener and go to actions manage rules from here so it's actions manage rules and here you can see you will see the listener details and along with the listener and i'll talk about it in a second just now and let's see how we add rules to it so here you can edit the rule you can add the rule here you can reorder them right so click on plus insert the rule now your rule will have a rule id it will have a condition and then it will have an action if the condition matches so the rule id would be generated when you save your rules i'm gonna ch click on add condition now here you can see the condition or the routing condition can be based on host header it can be based on path it can also be based on http header also on the http request method whether it's a get or post or what kind of a request it is it is also based on the query string of your uh, url as well as it can also be based on the source ip from where the request is coming up for this demonstration purpose we're going to pick path based routing or the condition so let's say pick the path based routing and when the value is image asterisk this is my condition if load balancer sees this path in the url what action should it take it should forward it to the target group of image named image now you also see we have got i mean this once this condition matches this request can go to multiple target groups and basically you can add a weightage to each target group accordingly thus incoming request would be routed now if i give let's say 10 here and 20 here so this target group will receive double of the request which th this target group is gonna receive so this is according based on the weight which you decide here right so i'm not gonna put it here i'm gonna just keep it one and i don't want another different one and i'm gonna also if you see we have a group level stickiness if you have a incoming request and where you see that the operation is going to be a, of a longer duration and if something happens and the connection breaks the request should come to the same register target for that you need to make sure that you enable this stickiness option here we're not doing it currently so i'm just going to save this so this is my condition this is my action and then i'm going to save the rule so now this rule id has been created 
and this is my default rule now let's add one more rule because we got three uh, servers right so let's add one more i want that if uh, the path contains cart in the image oh, sorry in the url path then the action should be that the traffic should be forwarded to my cart target group along with the 100% traffic distribution i'm going to save this rule as well now there's one more thing you can uh, this default rule as i said there's the lowest priority and the rules are conf uh, you know evaluated on from low highest to the lower priority so the, in the last when no condition matches here this rule this default rule would be applicable you cannot uh, delete the default rule you can delete and reorder these rules which you customize or which you create later on now moving further so we have created the rule let's see what happens now i'm again onto the image path i'm going to just refresh it so it is going to the image catalog server now now if i go back to uh, we also have one sub server which is cart server if you reset it goes the cart now and see it takes to the server to the order cart server so guys this is how you can configure a you know uh, workable solution with your application load balancer before we go just reiterate some important points so what are the points which we should which you should remember about at AWS application load balancer. So basically this is a load balancer which works on OSI models layer seven that is the application layer and it supports your HTTP and HTTPS protocols. The components are load balancer, listener and the target groups. The default routing algorithm is round robin but we can also use or we can also configure something called out least outstanding request based on the kind of a use cases you have. Round robin is the best choice but if you understand that you have a different <coughs> you know uh, targets which are of a different capacity so based on, <clears throat> based on that you can pick up your routing mechanism then it's the base it's also support request uh, i mean redirecting of requests from one url to another it also support registering lambda functions as a target which was not the case with the classic load balancer also your you can offload authentication of users to your application load balancer it can take make use of uh, AWS Cognito or other corporate or social identities uh, and it can take care of the authentication also. So that saves a lot of time from your application team that they need not to work upon the authentication part of it. So that's it for this video. This 